Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn about the nature of the roots of a quadratic function. These are the properties of the roots or the x-intercepts. So our first example, given f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 3, find the discriminant. As a reminder, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So we're going to have positive 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. So we have 4 plus 12, which is 16. So our discriminant is a perfect square. We know that we can factor the quadratic, which is helpful in answering the next question, which is find the x-intercepts, which occur when y equals 0. In this case, we have f of x for function notation. So we'll set x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. We know this can be factored. So we have x plus 3 times x minus 1 as the factors equals 0. By the zero product property, either x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. So either x equals negative 3 or x equals positive 1. Now typically, we write this as a solution set of negative 3 comma 1. But because we're looking for x-intercepts, which are individual points, we'll write negative 3, 0 and 1, 0 as our solutions. These points are on the parabolic curve defined by x squared plus 2x minus 3. So let's actually graph that parabola. So in our table of values, we know that negative 3 is 0 and 1 is 0. Axis of symmetry, well, we have two symmetric points. So we know the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 1, which makes this point the vertex. That's helpful to know because it's going to make our life easier filling out the table. By symmetry, if we know what the output of negative 4 is, we'll also know what the output of 2 is. But let's start by finding the output of the vertex. So if we input negative 1 quantity squared as positive 1, minus 2 is negative 1, minus 3 is negative 4. If we input negative 4, negative 4 quantity squared is 16, minus 8 is 8, minus 3 is 5. By symmetry, the output of 2 is 5. If we input negative 2, the quantity negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. By symmetry, the output of 0 is also negative 3. So we can now plot these points, so negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 3, 0, negative 2, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, 0, 2, 5. So these points define the parabolic curve. So we'll connect our points. And there we have our parabola. Okay, so we have two x-intercepts at negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. Discriminant was positive 16. Our next example, f of x equals x squared minus 10x plus 25. First thing, find the discriminant. So again, that's b squared minus 4ac. So that's negative 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times 25, which is 100 minus 100, which is 0. Okay, so discriminant of 0. Still a perfect square, but does that affect the x-intercepts? Well, let's factor and find out. So we have x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. So we have x minus 5 times x minus 5 as the factors equals 0. So that means either x minus 5 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. So that means x equals 5 or x equals 5. Well, that's really just one solution. So we only have one x-intercept at the point 5, 0. Now that point's on the parabola, so again, let's graph this whole parabolic curve. So we have 5, 0. Well, we don't have symmetric points, so let's find the axis of symmetry. If we recall, the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So that here is going to be positive 10 over 2 
which is 5. So x equals 5. So that means that point, which was the x-intercept, is also the vertex. Okay, now let's substitute. So we have 2 squared is 4, minus 20 is negative 16, plus 25 is 9. So we also know the output of 8 is 9. If we input 3, we'd have 3 squared is 9, minus 30 is negative 21, plus 25 is 4 by symmetry. Output of 7 is 4. Input positive 4, squared we'd have 16, minus 40 is negative 24, plus 25 is 1 by symmetry. We'd also have 1 there. Okay, so we have 2, 9, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 1, 5, 0, 6, 1, 7, 4, 8, 9. So we'll connect our points. Let's try to redo that. It's a little better. Okay, so there's our parabolic curve. Now, notice discriminant of zero, we only have one x-intercept. And when we have one x-intercept, that point is also the vertex of our curve. Okay. Next example, f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 14. So we're going to find the discriminant. Again, b squared minus 4ac. So we have negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 14. So we have 64 minus 40, 16, minus 56, which is 8. So now we don't have a perfect square discriminant. So when we set our function equal to 0, and we're trying to solve for the x-intercepts, we're going to need to use the quadratic function. So that means a equals 1, b equals negative 8, c is 14, and the discriminant is positive 8. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant all over 2a. Square root of 8, we can simplify to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is 2 times the square root of 2. So we have x equals positive 8 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. In the numerator, we can factor out a 2. We're left with 4 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. The 2's simplify. And we're left with x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 2. So our x-intercepts are 4 plus the square root of 2 comma 0 and 4 minus the square root of 2 comma 0. Now these are going to be irrational numbers but they're exactly where the x-intercepts occur. There are still two of them. Right? We had a positive discriminant. It wasn't a perfect square now, okay? but we had two x-intercepts. Now, graph using the table of values, well, unfortunately, because our x-intercepts are irrational, they're not going to show up on the table. But we can find the axis of symmetry to help us out a little bit. So x equals negative b over 2a. So that's going to be positive 8 over 2. x equals 4. Okay, so we know this point in the table is going to be our vertex. So if we substitute 4 in, we'd have 16 minus 32, which is negative 16, plus 14 is negative 2. Now if we input positive 1, we'd have 1 squared, which is 1, minus 8, which is negative 7, plus 14, which is 7. And we also know that the output of 7 is 7. If we input 2, we'd have 4 minus 16, which is negative 12, plus 14 is 2. So the output of 6 is 2. If we input 3, we'd have 9 minus 24, so that's going to be negative 15, plus 14 is negative 1, and the output of 5 is also going to be negative 1. So we can plot our points, so 1, 7, 2, 2, 
3, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 5, negative 1, 6, 2, and 7, 7. And we can connect our point to create our parabolic curve. And there we have our parabolic curve. Still two x-intercepts. Okay, 4 plus square root of 2. Square root of 2 is 1.414, so that would be 5.414, which is approximately where that x-intercept happens. And a similar estimation will show for minus rad 2 is approximately between 2 and 3. Okay, so we found a bunch of discriminants, a bunch of x-intercepts. Now can we come to a conclusion? How can the discriminant help us determine how many x-intercepts a quadratic function will have? Well, when we had a positive discriminant, we had two x-intercepts. In the first example, the discriminant was a perfect square, so they were nice x-intercepts, negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. And in the third example, the discriminant was 8, which is not a perfect square, so we had irrational x-intercepts, but we still had two of them. When the discriminant is exactly 0, we only had one x-intercept. And the last case, which we didn't graph an example of, if the discriminant was less than 0, well, that would mean we'd have a negative number inside the square root for the quadratic formula. We'd have 0 x-intercepts. That graph would never touch the x-axis. Well, what else do we know about the x-intercepts or the roots based off the discriminant? Well, the nature of the roots can be defined as follows. If the discriminant is equal to zero, we can describe the roots as real, rational, and equal. The equal part should make sense because when we factored it, we wound up with the same solution. In our example, that was x equals five. Five was a rational number, and it was definitely a real number. When the discriminant is greater than zero and a perfect square, so that's the first example we looked at, the roots were real, they were rational, and they were unequal. There was two roots, negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. Similarly, if the discriminant is greater than 0 and not a perfect square, the roots are still real, but now they're irrational. In our example, that was 4 plus or minus the square root of 2, and unequal. There are still two of them. And then the last case, which we didn't look at a specific example for, if the discriminant was less than 0, the roots are non-real. Okay, the graph, the parabola, would never touch the x-axis. Now let's look at a few examples where we just use the discriminant to describe the nature of the roots. So describe the discriminant and determine the nature of the roots based off each of the given parabolas. Okay, so first thing I'm going to look at is the x-intercepts. So there are two of them. So automatically that tells me that the discriminant is greater than zero. It's a positive number. Now in this particular example, the x-intercepts are 1, 0, and 5, 0. So if we describe them, I would say they're real. The roots are real. They're rational. 1 and 5 are rational numbers. And they're unequal. The two roots are 1 and 5. Gives us two separate x-intercepts. In the second example, the parabola never hits the x-axis. So there are no x-intercepts. That means the discriminant is less than zero, and the way we describe it would be non-real, or imaginary roots, okay, which is a topic that we're not going to get to in this course, but it's very interesting. Last example, find the nature of the roots for each of the following quadratic functions. Use the nature of the roots to determine how many x-intercepts the graph will have. So the first thing we're going to have to do is find the discriminant. So in this case, that's going to be 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 8. So we have 25 plus 64, which is going to be 89. So that's not a perfect square. Okay, so... Discriminant is greater than zero, not a perfect square. 
So how are we going to describe the roots? They're going to be real. They're going to be irrational because we'd have the square root of 89 when we're solving with the quadratic formula. And they're going to be unequal. That unequal part is the important piece for answering the x-intercept question. Since they're unequal, that means there's going to be two x-intercepts. And our last example, y equals negative x squared minus 12x minus 36. So our discriminant is negative 12 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 36. So we have 144 minus 120, 24, so 144, that's equal to 0. So our discriminant is 0, so that means our roots are real, they're rational, and they're equal. If we factor this, we would see that we would get the same solution, and the equal part's important for answering the x-intercept part, if they're equal, that means we're going to have only one x-intercept. So the focus of this video was all on the discriminant and using it to define the nature of the roots, which are helpful in finding out properties of our graph, which will make our life easier when we're actually graphing these functions. Now, go through these, watch any part of the video again that might be confusing, and then try a few practice problems on your own. Click the Amazon link down below for my algebra workbook so you can practice on your own. Give the video a like, and before you go, click that subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching.